Hello, I'm Timothy Jordan, and this is your update about the coolest developer news from Google in the last week. And for those paying attention, last week was Google I.O. So here's a roundup of everything that went down at the developer festival. Starting with everything that happened at the festival outside the session rooms. Check out this playlist to come along with me as we explore the venue, play with all the cool stuff, and get the inside scoop from the experts. Android is officially supporting the Kotlin programming language, in addition to the Java language and C++. Kotlin is a brilliantly designed, mature, production-ready language that we believe will make Android development faster and more fun. Details, code, and links are on the post linked in the description below. Android Instant Apps is a new way to run Android apps without requiring installation. Now anyone can build and publish an Instant App. Android Studio 3.0 Canary is our new preview that includes three major features to accelerate development flow. A new suite of app performance profiling tools to quickly diagnose performance issues, support for the Kotlin programming language, and increased Gradle build speeds for large-sized app projects. There are several powerful new features and reports in the Play Console to help you improve your app's performance, manage releases with confidence, reach a global audience, and grow your business. We're excited to announce that our second generation tensor processing units are coming to Google Compute Engine as cloud TPUs, where you can connect them to virtual machines of all shapes and sizes and mix and match them with other types of hardware, including Skylake CPUs and NVIDIA GPUs. You can program these cloud TPUs with TensorFlow, the most popular open source machine learning framework on GitHub. And we're introducing high-level APIs, which will make it easier to train machine learning models on CPUs, GPUs, or cloud TPUs with minimal code changes. Many top researchers don't have access to anywhere near as much compute power as they need. To help as many of them as we can and further accelerate the pace of open machine learning research, we'll make 1,000 cloud TPUs available at no cost to ML researchers via the TensorFlow Research Cloud. With Firebase, we're providing more insights to understand app performance through a new product, Firebase Performance Monitoring. We're also introducing integration between hosting and cloud functions, adding support for phone number authentication, and improving analytics. Oh, and we've also started open sourcing our SDKs. For Google Assistant, we launched the Actions Console, a new developer console that helps developers work as a team and collect data on app usage, performance, and user discovery patterns. This new console is integrated with the Firebase and Google Cloud consoles. To help you take advantage of the new features of Android Wear 2.0, we have released a suite of complication API tools to make it easier for you to add complication support to your watch faces, and a new Wear UI library to help you build watch-friendly user interfaces. We released Developer Preview 4 of Android Things, which brings new supported hardware, features, and bug fixes to the platform. We've introduced new innovations for you to make it easy for your users to pay for services with the Google Payment API, to build profitable businesses with a completely redesigned ad mob, and to grow a user base with universal app campaigns. Screenshots and links are on the post in the description below, which is where you'll find links to all of the updates we just reviewed. Please like and share. I'm Timothy Jordan, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in for this week's roundup of Google I.O. If you'd like to catch some of our previous dev show episodes, they're right here.